Let's review Orico new USB 4 SSD that is part of their montage series. This is Art is Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. Orico sent me this drive for review. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. I have been using their product much longer than I have been collaborating with them, and this is because they offer great quality product and a unique offering. This USB 4 portable SSD is no different. This is the latest in the lineup, which is part of their Montage or MTQ series. Now, looking at this SSD, there are a lot of things to talk about. We're going to talk about some of the configurable options, which there are plenty to choose from later on in this video, and also a sustained speed test. But first, let's address the design, which I think is really unique, polarizing at the same time, and it also provides for a drive that is slightly larger than the offering that are in the market today. Personally, I'm okay with this. The weight of a drive is fairly good. It feels good in the hand. And the build itself, the band around this is a metal. It is zinc alloy, so it does provide a few things, strength to the device and also heat dissipation. As far as the top and bottom go, this is an ABS plastic. It has rounded corners and it is also glossy. So this is definitely going to be a scratch magnet. If you're using this drive, definitely be careful for that. Now on the drive itself, you will have a USB-C type connection on the very bottom of it. And that is the only connection that you have along with an indicator light notifying you that is on or reading and writing to your drive. In the box, you get the drive itself. You get a USB-C to USB-C braided cable. This is something that I really like. It's around eight inches long. It's not the longest cable, but this is meant to be a portable drive that you use your computer. So this makes sense. In addition to this, something that's a little bit slightly different than their website marketing material right now is that there is a USB-C to USB-A cable, whereas on their website, there is an adapter that is inline on the cable. Just something different that I know and I want to mention that should you get one of these. And with that said, the design for this drive is based on Pete Mondrian 1930 painting composition of red, yellow, and blue, which I think works out really great. And you know, it's a really modern contemporary drive. Now let's talk about configurable options, which there are plenty. A couple things to remember is that you don't necessarily need to get the fastest SSD on the market to use in a pro workflow. I'll leave a link to a video outlining that up here and also in the description below. This being said, you can configure this drive at four different speed, five gigabits per second, 10, 20, and 40. As far as capacity go, it ranges from 256 gigabyte up to two terabyte in capacity. A few comments I have here is that I wish that in certain series or certain speed, they have more capacity option. For example, the 10 and 20 gigabits per second drive, I wish they have a two terabyte model. And I also wish that the 40 gigabits per second have a four terabyte capacity. This way it covers a broader range of users, you know, myself would be included and some of you that are out there. As far as being able to configure drive with different speed, for instance, and also capacity and maintain the same form factor, this is definitely something to consider because I think the design is really pretty and you get multiple of these, just label them very well and you can identify quickly which one is the faster, which one's the slower one. In fact, it will also have the label on the drive itself, letting you know the speed for the drive, which is really awesome. As far as capacity go, you kind of have to take a look on the side a little bit, but it doesn't really tell you the capacity on the drive itself. So I would use a good label on that. But if you're looking for uniformity, this is definitely the one to consider. Now, as far as testing the speed on this drive, I have tested this on numerous Mac computers, mostly focusing on the new Apple Silicon. For this, I have tested on the Pro Mac. These are the Mac computers with the M1 Pro, M1 Max, M1 Ultra chip that has a really great robust Thunderbolt 4 USB-C type connection on these computers. And I'm able to get around 2.2 gigabytes per second write speed and around 2.8 gigabytes per second read speed, which is really awesome. Not the highest theoretical speed at around like 3,100 megabytes per second, but it is really close up there. And a quick reminder, the model that Orico sent me is a 40 gigabits per second, one terabyte capacity. 
Now, as far as testing this drive with the M1 and M2 chip for both the 13 MacBook Pro, MacBook Air, Mac Mini, the speed is definitely slower on those computers. That is because Apple is using a Thunderbolt 3 technology that is still compatible with USB 4, but you're not necessarily going to get that full speed. So for those computers with the M1 and M2 chip, I'm able to achieve a 1.6 gigabits per second write and a 2.7 or 2.8 gigabytes per second read. Now that speed is still plenty enough for modern day drive to use in any type of pro workflow, but you're not necessarily achieving that full 40 gigabits per second. So if you have those machines, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that you go in and choose the 40 gigabits per second model. You may want to consider the 10 or 20 gigabytes per second model instead. And with this, we have to talk about sustained transfer speed based on my testing. So I have tested this drive with my Mac Studio, which has a much faster internal SSD. So the bottleneck for writing to this drive is pretty much the limit of the NAND itself on this ship that can write at around 2.2 gigabytes per second. For this, I have grouped together 500 gigabytes of video files and transfer it over. A couple of things that I have observed is that the files are able to transfer sustainably at 2.2 gigabytes per second until the buffer does fill up. And the buffer for this drive does fill up at around 120 gigabytes. From that point on, the speed drops down to around 1.2 gigabytes per second. However, the drive is able to sustain writing at that speed until it finishes the task. This is something that is totally normal for any SSD that are out there on the market today. There are very few drives that can sustain the high write speed throughout the entire duration. So this is something normal, it's not a bug, it's not anything wrong with the drive. It is the way how it is supposed to behave. As far as heat go during the file transfer, the drive does get somewhat warm, but it's not anything hot to the touch or anything that I can't hold in my hand for that matter. So I think this is perfectly okay. So based on my testing so far, I would highly recommend that you consider a Rico drive in the lineup if you are thinking about getting a new SSD drive to add to your workflow. I'll leave a link to their website and also to the Amazon link in the description below this video. Anyway, if you have any questions or comments about this drive, leave them in the description below. Give this a like, subscribe, and hit on the bell you're new and in our trust.